people of God, good to see you. I think everything is working. I tell you, the enemy didn't want this computer stuff to work, but God made it all work. So hallelujah, so happy that you're tuning in or you're watching this at another time. I praise God for leading you to tune in. God is doing great and mighty things. And I'm so excited that you love him, that you are always always putting your focus on the things of the kingdom. I'm, I'm going to pray and then I'm going to, to release and share with you some of the things that's in my spirit. Amen. So our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from all evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever and ever. Amen. Amen. Forevermore, God is on the throne. This is a, a season that we have just entered. We just uh, uh, talked about Rosh Hashanah, the head of the year, the Jewish New Year's year 5783 was starting last Sunday at sundown until yesterday at sundown and then where they also started what's called the 10 days of awe leading to Yom Kippur which will be next week October 4th to uh, Wednesday 5th so next week we can celebrate the day of atonement and talk about what that means for us in Christ that I Every year I look, I look on those different feasts, especially the three high feasts in this season. The next one will be the Feast of Tabernacles, looking for us, for what the Lord wants us to know in connection with who he is. We look for Jesus in everything. We, we just always search the scriptures to see what it's telling us about him, the the ten days of awe are the days where they they repent, they they turn from different ways, and they and it leads to the day of atonement. For us in the New Testament, the precious Holy Spirit, oh, he's so precious, he's so wonderful, he has a way to to lead us, to convict us. But there's also time, seasons, and I believe this is one of the seasons that he, he leads us to another degree, another level, to seek him in, in order for him to show us, to shine his light on different things. 5783, as I've been sharing, is, it means the, to be the to be exposed, the revelation, I've been hearing revelation, restoration, reconciliation, and for the things that is leading us to walk in, because the, the picture of the, the three is someone that's walking, the feet are moving, it's in movement. We are going to step into some things like never before. God is preparing us, he's been preparing us for a long, long time. And, and in order to do some of those things, is is taking care of things that could hinder us. So he's helping us, he's helping us. And what I've been seeing and hearing, even before I go into restoration, into this season that's connected with this uh, uh, looking inward, is this, this is a turning point. This season, this, this new year, this shift, it's a turning point and, and I want to zoom in on this word because I've been the Holy Spirit hasn't hasn't been moving from this word turning, 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 turning point. Have you ever gone through a, a, an experience or something that happened in your life and, and it was a turning point? You can go back and remember exactly how a situation was a turning point 
point. Surely the most important turning point in our lives is when the Holy Spirit opened our heart and we believe that Jesus died on the cross and was buried and rose on the third day and we became born again, a new creation. That was a huge turning point to be translated out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. But in the process of us walking into all the things that God has, there's different things that that I want to touch on that, that connects to the word to turn. And the first one is to turn in, to turn inward. Many times when we go through circumstances, battles, trials, it's easy to look for a reason, to look for things outward, to, to turn our eyes to things on the outside. But the, the Spirit of God leads us to look inside our hearts, to turn inward, not just to look inside our hearts, but to turn inward to his presence. Because if we forget that he's in us and he's with us, I mean, that there's no way we're going to be able to war in stand if we don't know that he is in us. We need to not just know that he is with us and in us, but we need to turn inward for him to do whatever he needs to do on the inside so that then he can work through us as he will. And when the Holy Spirit, he takes his big flashlight and he zoom in on some stuff, it's not always easy, but because he does it with so much love, it takes us to a place of, of standing in awe of his goodness, to stand in awe of who he is. It's the goodness of God that leads us to repentance. But to repent, literally, some people call it a spiritual U-turn. That's what it is. You, you turn back, you change your mind, you turn back back. And what the enemy does is he battles us to cause us not to turn back in, a, in the sense of repent, but to turn back in some of the things we've been set free from. I've been hearing a lot of battles that the enemy is trying to tempt people with things that they have been set free from to tempt them with things of the flesh that they haven't been tempted for years and even to tempt them with things that they have never been tempted with before. So when you when you go to another level to turn inward, to seek the Holy Spirit, for him to do whatever he needs to do because of what he has planned to do through you, the members of the body of Christ, expect the enemy will come to try to battle you so that you can turn back to some of these things. But it's not to turn back to some of the things that we that we are going to do. We're going to turn back. We, we have repented. We are born again, but the Holy Spirit helps us always to show us things that, that are not necessarily, and they shouldn't be intentional or premeditated scenes, but just when you, when you get angry or when you lose your temper or you get impatient or whatever. And it could also be to for him to show you that there's some some areas that that you shouldn't have you shouldn't have these thoughts so it connects to the battle of the of the mind the revelation comes for restoration and in between there's always repentance there's always a cleansing there's always the holy spirit that deals with some things on the inside but for the people who are not born again Many of them you're going to see are going to turn back to, to repent. It's the goodness of God. It's the Holy Spirit that's going to do in their lives like he did in our lives. He's going to open the veil. He's going to, to do what only he can do. Isaiah 60 verse 1 through 3 is our scripture. This year, arise and shine for your light has come. 
and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and deep darkness the people. But the Lord will arise over you, and his glory will be seen upon you. The verse 3 says, The Gentiles shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your rising. When the Holy Spirit is shines his light and you turn inward, one of the, the most important things that the, the Lord is leading us to understand in this season is that as we arise and shine, we are going to, to see the manifestation of his glory in and through us. And the darkness is going to act up even more. Because the the light always stirs up the darkness. But think about you carrying the light that the scripture tells us, Jesus tells us not to put our light under a basket, not to put it under a bushel. What this, this season is going to do is remove some of these baskets, remove some of these bushels. What causes people who carry the light? What causes them to hide the light sometimes? It, it's insecurity, inferiority, uh, intimidation, fear, worry, different things like that. But what this scripture shows us is that the glory and the light's going to shine so bright that it's going to overcome. It's going to overcome. Think about the power of God, how it cannot be limited by our limitation. How, no matter what's in his way, when there's a time, this is a time for a turning point, that God is able to come upon his body in such a way that it will push away everything that's been hindering us. And the light will shine even though you don't even realize it. I know that you have gone through a situation that the, you didn't even know that the light was shining through you. The bushels are coming down. You're going to walk in great boldness. The Lord is going to arise upon you. Whatever he's calling you to be, to do, you're going to do it in confidence in him, in who he is, not in who you are. Whatever is opening for you, it's going to be able to, to encourage you, encourage you and strengthen you and show you that it's not because of, of your limitation that things have not been happening, but it's been because of a, a timing that now is a, a turning point. Then there's things that we look at regarding turning back, repentance, the enemy come to cause us to turn back. And then there's the to turn aside to hear him, just like Moses did when the burning bush was right there on the side. That this sight was so incredible that it caused him to turn to the side to see what was causing this bush to burn but not be consumed. You are going to be so filled with his glory that as you turn to the side to see what's happening even in other vessel, you're not even going to realize that it's happening through you, through you, that, that other people are going to, to turn aside and, and look at the Christ in you, not you. You know, that, that there's, there's people that don't receive from you because they look at the natural, they see you just like they, they saw Jesus as the carpenter's son. They, they didn't recognize who he was, a prophet, can not do work in his own country. It gets frustrating when other people still look at you in the natural and don't see the Christ in you. But when when there's a turning point, again, the glory of the Lord is so strong that it bypasses, 
it bypasses or the natural to show forth and draw people because the heart of God is that not all will come to repentance. The heart of God right now is calling people, is bringing forth a great harvest. A lot of people that have even turned turn back to some of the things and, and, and even turn away from God. God is bringing forth, is bringing back forth. Oh, I'm so excited because when all these people are coming back, it's going to, you talk about a turning point, or you talk about a wave of glory. If you have children, grandchildren, friends, people you know, there's people that have been praying for for years, and I'm excited to see that they're going to have a turning point, they're going to turn back, they're going to repent, and they're going to, they're going to, turn away and turn around. Hallelujah. And we are going to be empowered to turn away from things that are keeping us away from paying attention, from turning to the side. Moses, if he had focused on, on distractions, on things, he wouldn't have been able to, to even pay attention to what was happening. This is a a season like no other to be alert, to be alert, to to watch out for the little things that cause us to be distracted because we don't want to, we don't want to miss some of those encounters of the Holy Ghost kind. We don't want to miss those. The glory of the Lord when it when it breaks through and and it's like a, the breakthrough anointing, the breakthrough anointing. The Lord, even as He's bringing provisions for visions, is bringing the provisions to do what He's told you to do. And you've been wondering, well, how am I going to do that? I don't have the finances. It's, it's time to stop focusing on the way that we can do things. Because honestly, we cannot do what God is what God does. We cannot do what he's about to do. The, the only thing we can do is love him, worship him, be, believe in him, trust him, put our whole heart, turn inward, turn our eyes up, turn away from things that would try to distract us and, and keep, 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 keep the faith, stand by faith. That Jesus said, will I, will he find faith when he comes? Will you find faith? Not faith in our works, not faith in what we can do. Oh, how we need the Spirit of the living God to help us walk into what God leads us to walk in. He wants us to, to come to Him, to repent, to receive forgiveness. And to receive forgiveness means that we walk forward. We walk forward. We can walk free because He tells us that we are free in him, that whom the Son set free shall be free indeed. When I hear this word, turning point, I, I, I like this, this visual of you, you go on your way, you, you do whatever you do every day, and then, then there's one moment, one point, hmm. Doesn't have to be a lot of days, a lot of things. No, it's just like a twinkling of an eye. It's just one point, one moment in time where everything changes. And as we walk, as we have received him, we walk in him. This season that we have just passed through and that we walk in him as we continue even in 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 weeks to come to continue to dig into this is a turning point is a point it's a moment in time that was set forth for things to turn in a different way when we don't know where the future holds we can trust the lord holds us well if we trust that he holds us that we are in his hand 
we can trust that what he's going to do is going to do it in spite of us. What we have to do in the, what we have to do is allow him, allow the Spirit of God to show us if there's any anything in us that needs to that he needs to show us. And you know, this is a daily thing. This is a glory to glory thing. This is not a a perfection a religious thing as much as as a relationship. See, I'll show you some things. I was I was thinking about you know the finances uh, to do some of the things that he wants to, uh, done for the kingdom. It's for the kingdom, and he was showing me that there's some areas where where people have not been have not been uh, always faithful with their money. They have not always uh, been good stewards. Is the word of their money, but that as the Holy Spirit shows you and and you you tell him to help you and you turn back from those ways, the, the Lord is going to just do a turn around. See the, the turning point when when you when you turn back, let's say you are here, you are in case some people listen to that message at point A <laughs> and something happened that you're not a good steward of something or you, you go through a season that you know you, you're you not doing exactly what you're supposed to do or whatever and, and you get to point B. And this point is the point that the Holy Spirit shows you and you repent. Well, to repent, to do the U-turn is to turn back. So when you turn back, when you repent, you change your mind, you do this U-turn and the, do you receive his forgiveness, you actually go back to point A, like nothing, like nothing, nothing, nothing can hinder you. It's not like turn back and, oh my God, you just missed out and too bad, too sad. No, the true forgiveness, the true, the true heart of God is the connection between to repent, which is to turn back. It's actually the restoration that he brings back. He brings you back to point A and then he brings you point C, that was on the other side that you that you missed on he brings it and it just you just jump that's called the redemption of time that's the redemption of time how much time are you are you looking at in your life that you wonder that maybe you lost what relationships have you gone through that you thought oh if i would have done this and i would have done that what place have you been standing lately that you've been feeling like there's no point, like there's no point? Why am I going through this? What's the point in all that? God is about to show you the point. God in this turning point is going to show you the point. And another thing that I, that I saw is that we need it. I wrote down, turn the dial, turn the dial. I remember when I was, when I was young in France, the telephone was, the telephone said a dial, and then you needed to turn it to make a phone call. One day we need to show the new generation what that looked like. Maybe they will appreciate their phone. But the, to turn the dial means in the spirit that the time, things that have been that have been almost lost, God is going to bring back. He's gonna turn the dial like on a clock. He's gonna turn the dial like when you're trying to listen to something and you need to get the right number, you need to get the right things so that it all lines up. The Spirit of God is going to do that. And I know he already started, he already started ever since, uh, ever since the last two days, you can already sense in the Spirit that there's a turning point, that this is not going to be like it was. In, uh, in the, I think it was, in, 
in five, seven, eight, zero, three years ago, it was it was the strong, strong, strong word that I had in my spirit about the decade of the mouth and that we had stepped into a new era where this is what the Spirit of God is showing us even now. This is the turning point, my children. This is not going to be like it was. And it's not going to be like you expect. It's going to be all about my glory. So as you turn back and as I cause you to turn inward and I call you to turn to the side, you will be able to experience my presence in new ways. You will be able to feel separated, separated from the world around you. And the more you separate it from the world around you, the more you are going to, to be in a higher place, in a place of protection protection like never before where you walk through fires and you not burn you you walk through storms and you are not touched so do not fear do not be dismayed turn aside pay attention to what i'm doing because i'm i'm transforming you and i'm empowering you and i'm filling you to be a vessel of my glory a glory a glory you gotta be like a burning bush burning bush the lord says seek me in this season and i will show you and whatever i reveal to you i will hear great great a great healing in your emotion, in your family, he says, we are going to see great reconciliation, that I'm bringing a supernatural uh, reconnection, a supernatural reconciliation with people that you never thought it would be possible. And this restoration as I unfold, my plan is going to bring back even some things that the enemy has stolen some years that was even taken from you, even, even some a, a connection to people that I will move just like I did in the book of Acts when I would I would speak to one person and Cornelius to go to go meet Peter. I'm going to do these kind of things and connect people supernaturally and put words of knowledge like I have been encouraging you and words of wisdom and put names to connect for, for even more purposes than you can ask or think. I has not seen and I've been, I've been encouraging you. I have been keeping you. I have been keeping you. And you will know why I've been keeping you for. Some of you have been wondering why I had you move, and you will see that it's because I, I have a move for you where you are, but I also have one for you when you move back for you to see what I have for you. Expect great salvation, expect my glory to be seen. I am with you. I am in you. Have no fear. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lift, lift up your hands wherever, wherever you are and you're listening to this word. And, and, and just, just tell, tell him, Lord, I receive your word in this season. And in every season, I will turn my heart to you. I turn inward. Spirit of the living God. Have your way in my heart, reveal to here, show me, and whatever you show me that you are working in. If there's anyone I need to forgive, I forgive. If there's any areas where I have fallen short, and we all fall short, my Lord, then, then help me even forgive myself. Remove intimidation and insecurity. Remove those things that are hindering precious Holy Spirit. I surrender myself to you and I say, yes, 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 yes. I will turn to the side. I will take the time to pay attention to your presence. I will turn away from distraction. I will turn back from things that I need to turn back from. I will turn, turn, turn pages that of the past that I should let go of. 
Have your way, I pray. Touch me, feel me. Touch my family. Thank you. Thank you for the turning point. Thank you for the turning point. We receive your word. We believe it. We thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah, my dear, mighty people of God. I, I love you. I praise God for you. I feel the spirit of the living God here, and I pray that uh, that you will that you will send me praise report, and I continue to pray for you next next Sunday. We're gonna continue to to talk about the other things that I've been hearing, and it, I, you know, I've been feeling like I'm a, that the Holy Spirit is leading me to unpack. Things. It's just like he, he just gives you a, a, shows you a big, big thing, and then he starts unpacking little parts because he knows we, he knows we need to to receive it line upon line, precept upon precept. It's just so wonderful, and I just feel like I'm unpacking, like I'm following this river, this river of God, and I'm just just so filled with with gratitude and thanksgiving i pray for you i love you and i and if i don't if you're not tuning in on sunday because this is online then next wednesday we're gonna celebrate the day of atonement we're gonna celebrate atonement together and oh my god expect 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 so i love you and i say later thank you bless you Thank you, Father. We give you praise, honor, and glory. We magnify your